All right, let's get into it. Let's start. Probably the biggest thing that we got to talk about to the top of this news and notes segment. Let's talk about Trinity Rodman and the Washington spirit. Trinity Rodman coming off of an epic rookie of the year NWSL championship winning type of season for Rodman with the Washington spirit officially signs a four year deal with the spirit. And it was reported that the four year deal could reach uh, $1.1 million in terms of the overall contract. The announcement was made just two days after the NWSL CBA was announced. I believe it was via the Washington post, but Mm -hmm. uh, huge, huge for this epic. I think, Big for this this player, big for the league. And believe it or not, maybe in five years, we're probably going to say maybe not enough. <laughs> believe I know. Uh, this is huge. I mean, uh, especially when you read the headlines, it's a $1.1 million deal over four years. And I think yeah. that million is what catches everyone's eye. And this comes just a few days after the first CBA in league history is ratified and passed, allowing a little bit more flexibility in the salary for a player like Trinity Rodman, who was 2021 rookie of the year, a forward with Washington spirit, uh, 19 years old. She skipped college and came right to the professional game to be the player that actually makes one of the richest NWSLs salaries and contracts in NWSL history is is huge is huge when you look at the numbers a little bit um uh, this season the NWSL maximum salary is $75,000 but teams are also able to use allocation money in order to boost those individual salaries so previously Kristen Press she signed one of the largest deals in league history uh with Angel City just recently that was reported at $550,000 over the three years. And now we have Trin at $1.1 million over four years. Um, this is huge, right? Like this is the future of the league and the future of salaries and the future of free agency for these players to be able to negotiate and make these contract deals. Um, and Sandra, when we spoke with former players, uh, Yale Aver Bush West and Lori Lindsay about the salary cap, they both said, of course, uh, the minimum isn't enough still. But when you see contracts like this, it it proves that we're getting there where these players are getting closer to what they deserve. I mean, Trinity Rodman, 19 years old, and she is one of the top players in this sport and she is nowhere near her ceiling because she is so young and because she's only one year into the league uh, I like love this for her and I love that she's staying in Washington right like this is great for the team for the club for the development after all of the the drama off the field and in the front office for the spirit to have this consistency and a player to really uh, hang your hat on over the next four years because you know that Trinity Rodman is only going to get better, especially if she keeps getting called into the national team yeah. camps, right? Like play alongside the best and you're just going to keep getting better. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, it's, you know, I just keep thinking about that, uh, the NWSL championship final, the post game that took place, you know, getting, getting to chat a little bit with, with the head coaches and, and, and players and, and asking like somebody like a Kelly O'Hara, like, Oh, is, is, you know, Talking about the spirit in 2021 is a team of, you know, a, a team of destiny. Like, are, is that going to be converted to like a, a team of dynasty? Like, and it's like, you, you can't, you can't look too ahead of it, which is what Kelly O'Hara said, but uh, it's got to start somewhere. And it started with them winning a championship. And now I feel like this is maybe just an extra piece to that. You know, we're talking about not only locking in a, a player with a historic contract, but, you know, you're talking for over the next four years so guaranteed a player is going to be with this particular club as she continues her development you know uh, with uh, this specific market uh so i think if you're a spirit fan you know seeing news like that you're you're thrilled to know that you're going to be watching trinity rodman involved with the spirit for the next uh you know several years it's an exciting time i think for the the spirit franchise indeed some more news to report about for other franchises chicago red stars shout out to my friend homie and colleague claire watkins reporting Mm -hmm. that kalia watt did in fact tear her acl and is currently recovering so she is not currently in preseason with the Chicago Red Stars, confirming that she did tear it during the NWSL semifinal last season 
during the 28th minute, had to come off of the pitch, and uh, according to the club, is uh, doing her continued rehab at home and will, quote, join the team when she is ready. So, uh, yeah, there's no fans or buts about it. Just a huge, huge loss and huge blow uh, to the Chicago Red Stars. I know we've talked uh, a lot about the, their offseason this year, and we're, I'm sure, going to take a deeper dive when we start doing our team previews. Uh, but the it's a shot to the roster and the uh, forward court specifically. Uh, let's take a look at some other different news around the league. Portland Thorns, Angela Salem retirement. This is a, this is the other part of offseason sometimes, Lisa. That I'm like, oh geez, this this is the other thing that actually also comes with an offseason as well. Like, yes, there's always like trades and um, new contracts and new signings and exciting things like that to talk about it. But the reality is, is that actually sometimes there's retirements to talk about as well. And uh, Angela Salem putting it out there for everyone. It's sad. I mean, this was rumored for a little bit. I know you and I had talked about it. Um, I I was not waiting for this announcement. Honestly, I was like, I hope it's just a rumor. I hope she yeah. tries to give it one more year. Um, but I, I mean, this is smart for a player that has had a lot of success in, in the NWSL as a defensive midfielder, especially with Portland. She really made a home there with the fans and, and with herself and her career, right? She's to me, watching her play is one of the best sixes in the game. Defensive midfielders. She is so good. Mark Parsons, former head coach of the Portland Thorns always spoke so highly of her. We got to speak with her during the Thorns playoff run and just genuine, right? Just such a good person. So this little rumor of a retirement came true this week, which was sad, but I mean, we wish her all the best in the next phase of her career. And I, I try to put it out there a lot, right? Manifest it. This is what we want. I would love to see Angela Salem on the other side of the game as a coach, uh, giving back because I think her knowledge and her vision as a player, her soccer IQ being a defensive midfielder, Salem is so smart and she's smart off the pitch as well. She's just a, a bright young woman. So if she can translate that and try to put it back into the other side of the game and, and pass along some of her knowledge. I think that would be great, right? Put it out there. Hope her all the best and everything, but really an end of an era for her, an end of an era for the Thorns because now they got to find some new players in the midfield without Lindsay Horan. Uh, now Angela Salem is stepping down, um, but when she put it out there, she said, quote, all good things must come to an end and it is time to walk away from the game. I love, it's just heartbreaking, Sandra, <laughs> but it was this yeah. really sweet post. She put out the 12 things that she learned throughout her career, like loving the game. Uh, if a team folds, you may find a new home in Portland. She yeah. gave a shout out to uh, the fans in Portland, shout out to a few of her teammates and Carly Lloyd and Kelly Hubley, right? Like playing Cardi B in the locker room before games. So I thought it was really sweet, but you're right. The sad parts of the off season. Yeah, we um, you know, we've been talking a lot about the CBA this week, you know, and and really celebrating it. Um, and when this retirement hit, it just sort of hit in a different way because it just is like coming within this week where all of this like epic stuff was happening, and it just sort of just all comes full circle. I think mm -hmm. we're talking a lot about the fact that the PA made their announcement with like a thank you at the end of their announcement to so many players that came before them and hope that they made players proud. And you do think about somebody like Angela Salem, who was with NWSL for so long. The fact that she talked specifically about being with a club that folded, yeah. and not just any club. I mean, we're talking about the Boston Breakers. You know, this was a franchise that had ties to prior women's pro soccer leagues in the United States that made an attempt to still try to be part of NWSL, but unfortunately the funding just was not there. Ended up having to fold uh, an expansion draft, ended up, or a dispersal draft, excuse me, ended up coming into play. And that's how she made her way to Portland Thorns. So it wasn't uh, this type of fold where it's like, oh, here's a fold. And all of a sudden there's, here is a promising owner that wants to come and rescue this team. Like, no, 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 no. Like sometimes there was just a team that folded and stopped existing and that was the case so what do you do with all these players and eventually they found different homes and uh, for her to touch on that specifically I thought was was really important because mm -hmm. she is a player in present day 
in the same week that a CBA, Sorgal CBA is announced, is leaving the game having had that experience, right, in this same league. So I'm with you. I would love to see her someday uh, still involved in soccer, hopefully on the coaching side of things. We'll see what's in store for the great Angela Salem. But we're into preseason, and maybe now's the time where we can actually, uh, you know, highlight this a little bit. We're going to be coming at everybody on attacking third with – 12, count them 12, maybe 13, probably <laughs> uh, actual previews for the NWSL preseason. We're going to be going team by team for everyone. And that's going to be, those are going to be rolling out throughout the duration of preseason, probably into challenge cup. We'll hopefully the schedule will work with us so we can stay on task. Uh, but if you got a team that you'd like to follow specifically, don't worry. We are going to talk about them specifically for you, including an all encompassing um, league wide kind of preview, but the rosters have all dropped, you know, so we wanted to touch on that and let everybody know in case you didn't know already, NWSL preseason rosters have dropped for all of the teams already. And uh, we were taking a look already trying to prepare for these previews and rightly so we noticed some things that stood out specifically from some of these rosters already. We did one of them being uh, on the San Diego roster. Well, Mana Shim, she is on the roster as a non-roster invitee to San Diego Wave FC. So she's in preseason. She is competing. Uh, she she did take some time off from the NWSL. She played from 2013 until 2018, last playing with the Houston Dash in 2018 before stepping away from the game. Um, she's she's known, I guess, most recently as being one of the very brave females and, and players to step forward um, and speak out in 2021 against the sexual coercion, the mistreatment and the abuse against players from former head coach Paul Riley. So she is back, back in the game, back with her boots on. She's very good friends and very close with forward Alex Morgan, who plays for San Diego. So she was seen training and, and playing with Alex Morgan over the last few weeks. Um, and then come February 1st, when the players report to preseason and San Diego put out their roster, Shim was listed. So she she doesn't have a contract yet. She still has to make the team in that sense. But this is one of the players that really, I was surprised to see her on the list. Um, right? I mean, we're talking about, I just, I'm, we we're just talking about Angela Salem. I'm talking about like things coming full circle. I mean, I don't know yeah. if we can get any more full circle than that. It was absolutely one of the things that we circled right away. And that we were like, this is something that we want to touch on very briefly, because, again, we're going to we're going to take deeper dives into each team, respectively. But for now, we wanted to, like, include that here in this very quick um, moment of the news and notes segment, uh, just because it was it was it was it was a big moment. And we're excited to to, to look further um, into that and really to get into all of the clubs and all of the preseason previews uh, that we're going to be doing for the clubs ahead of the 2022 season. But speaking of preseason roster, some additional reporting that happened just just before us sitting down to record this episode uh, out of uh, Equalizer from Jeff Kasuf, uh, confirming that Angel City says that they actually don't expect Julie Ertz to play in 2022 with the franchise. However, they do still retain her player rights. So a bit of breaking news in terms mm -hmm. of the roster and how it's potentially going to look for Angel City moving into the 2022 season. Uh, they did acquire Julie Ertz in a trade from Chicago Red Stars during really that early trade window of the offseason. Uh, the last time she played uh, was during the Tokyo Olympics in the summer of 2021. Uh, and the last time she played in NWSL saw was uh, in the very first game in the yeah. 2021 season during, uh, I believe the month of May. And she only played about a 30 minutes before coming out um, on the match with an injury against uh, Portland Thorns. So hasn't uh, played in NWSL probably in, in, in longer than actually, um, you know, compared to her last time with the, the Olympics. Yeah, but just a little bit of answers, right, from, I mean, two players out of Chicago in, in forward Kalia Watt, knowing that she did tear her ACL, um, and now uh, formerly with 
Chicago, Julie Ertz, just having a little bit of understanding of where she is on her journey because it's been really quiet from these players. Um, so getting some answers. So thanks to Jeff of the Equalizer for you know doing that reporting for us. Uh, some other news in the Soccer Hall of Fame world, former U.S. Women's National Team stars, goalkeeper Hope Solo and midfielder Shannon Box, they've been selected into the Soccer Hall of Fame. This was huge. There was a, a lot of different Hall of Fame announcements uh, over this last week a lot of them were done publicly which is really cool on air um which I, I highly suggest you go watch those because it's really nice to see the honest and reactions from these players being honored as as well as they are so it's hope solo shannon box i mean i remember watching them i think it's well deserved from both players i mean hope solo in on the field and in goal unstoppable right like she had so many incredible moments and shannon box one of the players that really built the u.s women's national team and built the the midfield six position as as she did um some other news the football association and professional footballers association they agreed to landmark contract changes that provide english female footballers Ballers, maternity and long-term sickness cover for the very first time in history. So NWSL making moves with their CBA announcement. And now English footballers able to get some maternity leave, some long-term sickness leave. Like, right, crazy that this wasn't there. Um, mm -hmm. But it's here now and they have this protection first time in history. So uh, finally, getting some respect on these professional women's names, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we're we're celebrating the NWSL's CBA, right? We want to celebrate this uh, for for English footballers as well. Again, hard to believe that something uh, like that isn't in place already for these athletes who already put their bodies through so much, right? Uh, and then to finally have this, it's another thing that we're just going to celebrate here at Attacking Third, and we're hopefully going to keep the celebrations uh, on a roll here uh, because, believe it or not. The AFC Women's Asian Cup is going to draw to a close. I cannot believe it. We've been watching games early in the morning, chatting about score updates throughout the uh, couple weeks here. Uh, but now we have two finalists who are going to be competing in the cup final. It's going to be China taking on South Korea. The quarterfinals happened on January 30th with the semifinals uh, just taking place, uh, really, as, as of for us so this morning, but uh, taking mm -hmm. place uh, on Wednesday. And then uh, now we're going to be closing out on February the 6th. But uh, within this specific uh, cup tournament, there was also the potential for teams to qualify for the 2023 World Cup. And we started to see those slots get clinched with quarterfinal performances. So we're talking about Japan, China, South Korea, the Philippines, punching their tickets to the 2023 World Cup coming off of quarterfinal victories and then participating in the semifinals. And there is still a fifth World Cup spot up for grabs. Mm -hmm. so what is happening right now, adjacent to these semifinals that just took place, adjacent to this cup final that's going to take place on February 6th, is there is a round-robin style tournament taking place alongside this competition still between Vietnam, Chinese Taipei, and Thailand. And they are competing for a fifth World Cup spot. Yes, this is huge and so exciting. Um, it, it's really pumped, right, for the Philippines. They advance oh uh, to the semifinals. Historic win in penalty kicks over Chinese Taipei. This is the Philippines' first ever World Cup appearance. Um, I'm a little surprised, right? Like when we did our preview, I was keeping my eye on Vietnam. I was impressed with them throughout this. We already have upset in India being knocked out very early on. But Japan, China, South Korea – and the Philippines potentially one more. So playing in this round robin, the fifth World Cup spot, Sandra, they have Vietnam, Chinese Taipei, and Thailand. Are you putting money on and either of these nations? Listen, I should have just took you at your word, Lisa. You picked Vietnam as a team to watch during this competition. As of our recording of this, they've already won one of their uh, playoff games. They've got to play two other ones, right? We're talking against Thailand and Chinese Taipei, but the fact that they are, they've got to play another one against, I believe uh, Chinese Taipei, but if they, the fact that they've got one already puts them in such a good position mm -hmm. to possibly clinch 
that fifth spot. So we'll see. We're going to keep an eye on it. We're going to keep an eye on that round robin tournament. We're going to keep an eye on the uh, cup final to see who is going to claim the title. It's either going to, it's going to be history making. It's either going to be China returning to their glory, right? The steel roses returning once again uh, to the top of the mountain, making their return to the final last, last time they were in, it was in uh, 2008, but they were the runners up then. And this is going to be historic for South Korea. It's going to be their first ever uh, appearance. So it's going to be a history making day, no matter who is coming out on top. Everybody, you can watch that championship final on February 6th. You can catch all AFC Women's Cup matches on Paramount+. Plus. If you've missed any of the games, you could catch full highlights on Attacking Third. Visit YouTube.com slash Attacking Third. 